Welcome to our service uh, here today at Grace Community Church. Uh, you're very welcome whether you're here uh, at Newhall Street uh, or watching online. Um, some of you may know that uh, this Sunday we were very excited to be having a, a baptismal service and Stephen Perry was going to be uh, being baptised to demonstrate uh, that uh, the Lord uh, has saved him, has brought him from uh, death to spiritual life and uh, we were really looking forward to that uh, but at the last minute really because of uh, illness particularly due to Covid uh, that has had to be cancelled and we're looking forward to that uh, at some time in the near future. Uh, but the thing uh, that we, we must remember in times like these is that uh, despite difficulties that we may face, either because of the pandemic or in our own lives, um, we, we are in a situation where the Lord is in control and He, in so many ways uh, during this difficult time, has used the, the difficulties and problems and obstacles that have come up because of COVID uh, to actually bless us and grow us in our faith. Uh, in him and there's a lovely song that um, probably most of us won't know uh, but I'll share the first verse and then we're going to sing it together and it's based on um, three verses uh, from the letters of Paul in Philippians and Colossians and it calls on us to not have anxiety about things but to trust the Lord and to bring the things that cause us difficulty and concern uh, to the Lord because he is the one who loves us, he is the one who has saved us and he is the one who is all sufficient at whatever our situation as we trust and follow him. So this is, this is how it goes.
because we had to change arrangements rather at the last minute um, on Friday, um, we've really put together a recorded service uh, because of the, the lack of time. And so later in the service, uh, it would be really good that uh, we're going to be sharing together uh, one of the sermons from our summer series in the Psalms uh, that was called The Lord Reigns. It's the first in the series and it looks at Psalm 97. So we'll be sharing that later uh, in the service. But let's come to the Lord in prayer now as, as we begin. Father God, we thank you that we can know you in such a way that we know you as our Lord and our King and our Father. And Lord, we would even say, because Jesus Christ called us such as your friends. And so Lord, we thank you that we have seen uh, during the past weeks and months that you are the all-sufficient one. You are the one in who we can trust uh, to even bring good out of difficulties and out of sadness. And so Lord, we pray that we would not be anxious in these times, but that we might bring our needs and our thanks and our praise to you, as we have been directed in the verses of scripture in the song that we have just sung. We particularly pray for Tim and family at the moment who are not well, but others too in the church who are not well because of COVID or because of other things. And we thank you, Lord, too, for answered prayer uh, in this regard. But we pray for those that are unwell, Lord, that you would help them to make a good and a speedy uh, recovery and that during this time they might know that you uh, are with them and that to bless. So, Lord, we thank you for your goodness to us. We pray that as we uh, share this service together, as we share the uh, psalm, as we sing your praises, Lord, that we might know your blessing and your presence with us. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to sing two songs uh, of praise uh, to the Lord, but as we praise the Lord too, uh, it helps us to focus on his goodness and his love and his greatness and his holiness. And so we're going to sing uh, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven, followed by Bless the Lord, O oh my soul.
Well, from dealing with an ex-partner who is far from kind or trustworthy in how they deal with us or our children, to the pain of a situation where someone that you trusted has hurt you deeply. From the fear that we might be discriminated against or worse because of the colour of our skin or the country we're from, to the fear that we might be discriminated against or worse because of our Christian beliefs. From the global um, drugs trade to the local spate of robberies or vandalism near us. From the overreach of governments to the selfishness of the person on the bus uh, with us. We live in a world where difficult situations can lead us to despair. We experience them personally. We're also fed a diet of them, aren't we, through the, the constant news cycle that there is uh, and that we absorb. And it's tempting, therefore, to be glum, grumpy, or even afraid. Sometimes it's hard to be anything but these things because of all of that. Do you find that? I find uh, that. Maybe we believe in God, but we find that he's not a God who's able to help us cope with those difficult things. Or at least in practice, those kind of things are a massive barrier to us loving and praising him. Well, if any of that resonates in any way with us this morning, then we need, then I need, Psalm 97. So that's where we're going to uh, be uh, now. I'm going to pray for us, and then Jane's going to come and read it for us, and we're going to see uh, how finding out about the Lord reigning uh, is a great help to us in all of those things that could tempt us uh, to despair in our lives. Father, we've asked for our daily bread. We've sung that we need the food of your holy word. And we pray that you would please feed us now, feed our souls, recalibrate our hearts, show us those dark places where your light hasn't yet shone, all those ways that we've wandered from your pathway and we need to be brought back. Open our eyes to see who you are more truly, more deeply. Uh, help us to trust you uh, more fully in our weakness and to return to you in our sin. And we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, Jane. Psalm 97. The Lord reigns. Let the earth be glad. Let the distant shores rejoice. Clouds and thick darkness surround him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Fire goes before him and consumes his foes on every side. His lightning lights up the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his righteousness and all peoples see his glory. All who worship images are put to shame, those who boast in idols. Worship him, all you gods. Zion hears and rejoices and the villages of Judah are glad because of your judgments, Lord. For you, Lord, are the most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. Let those who love the Lord hate evil, for he guards the lives of his faithful ones and delivers them from the hand of the wicked. Light shines on the righteous and joy on the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, you who are righteous, and praise his holy name. So Psalm 97 calls us to a revolution, um, or to a revival, uh, or a revitalization, from doubt to faith, from fear to joy, from glumness to glad rejoicing. It's just so clear, isn't it? The verse 1, the Lord reigns. Let the earth be glad. That's the, the, the banner over this whole psalm, isn't it? Verse 8, Zion hears and rejoices. And the villages of Judah are glad. 
and verse 12. Rejoice in the Lord, you who are righteous, and praise his holy name. So if you had a highlighter, and if it's your Bible, you could take a highlighter and highlight those. It's, re- it's a rejoicing, it's a being glad song, isn't it? It's a psalm to, to, to recalibrate us to praising God. And this isn't escapist rejoicing. You know, there's all this terrible stuff in the world, and the stuff that I'm going through, or trying to not go through in my life, or I wish I wasn't going through in my life, so I'm going to escape into some kind of emotional bubble, um, which is going to make me feel good and feel uh, better, a kind of spiritual version of a sanitised soft play area, where everything's kind of okay and there are no sharp and jagged edges or um, diseases that might be difficult, no disappointments, no deranged or dreadful people. Now this is rejoicing in the raw, rejoicing in the midst of reality. So the first thing for us this morning, we've got four things for us this morning uh, to sort of cling, um, cling on to, to, to recalibrate ourselves, to think about. First, rejoice with gritty gladness. Okay, and that's that realism, that's that facing life as it is, but still rejoicing in God. We are not the first people in the world to find it hard to rejoice in God because of the difficult things there are going on in the world. The bad guys seem to run the show. And it was ever thus. Look at verse 2. God's righteousness and justice are highlighted as being the foundation of his throne. Why are those things highlighted particularly? Because verse 7, this world is full of idols, full of people who don't worship the true and living God, who follow other ways, other religions, um, other philosophies. And verse 10, because of evil. That those who love the Lord, Lord hate evil. Evil is part of this world. Since um, Adam and Eve sinned, we've signed up as a race, haven't we, to being um, evil in different ways. And we're told in verse 10, God guards the lives of his faithful ones. What from? From the hand of the wicked. So do you see how in this psalm, you might sort of, we might miss it, but actually there's lots of grit sprinkled through it. The grit of life. Now these psalms are kingly psalms, and if not written by King David, they were gathered together by him as he prepared for the building of the temple. We don't know if this psalm was written in David's time, or was it after him, was it before him, but whichever time it was, if we could time travel and go back to that day, the day when it was written, when it was sung, We could lift the nearest rock and we would find plenty of nasty, depraved and awful evil things underneath that rock. In fact, we probably wouldn't need to lift rocks because often those kind of things were there in the life of the nation, just in public. They were often there in the corridors of power. Sometimes it was the king himself who was the problem. It was in the marketplaces and even in the religious structures. So Psalm 97 isn't a naive psalm. It's a psalm that knows, the psalmist knows all about those things. And yet it's a psalm calling us to praise. This world is full of fearful danger, draining disappointment, and plenty of pain. It's a hard world sometimes, even for God's people, for God's faithful ones. Look at verse 10 again. For God's faithful ones. Now, they weren't lacking in faith, were they? That they needed guarding and that they were in a world of evil. It wasn't because they lacked faith that they were having problems. What are they described as? Faith full ones. They were full of faith. But life was still hard. And this psalm calls us to rejoice with gladness amidst all this. So rejoice with gritty gladness. We're not talking as we talk about rejoicing as Christians, trying to escape into some spiritualized soft play area. But this is real life, uh, where we graze our knees, uh, where things are, are sad and hard, and yet we can still rejoice. Well, how can we rejoice in God? And that's the second thing, and probably it's the, the thing which will take us the most time in, the, in, our, in our sermon. Rejoice with gobsmacked gladness. Let me explain that. God, the revealed God in Scripture, the Lord, capital letters, the covenant-making, the promise-making God, he's not a kind of hand-wringing God you know, well-meaning, he, but really he's the God of flowers and bunnies 
and, and butterflies and kittens and sunsets. He sees the pain we're going through and the difficulties. We're being eaten up by the machinery of the universe. And he loves us and he wants to help us, but he, he feels for us, but he can't really do anything to help us. Do you know what I mean? That, that kind of a well-meaning God, um, but ultimately powerless. Neither is he a set everything in motion kind of God, and then he's gone away on holiday kind of God. You know, a, a watchmaker who's made the watch, wound it up, and now it's just going. And if you get caught up in the mechanism, well, God's out. You know, try his answer phone. No. And nor is God a God of mayhem. You know, who just frank, quite frankly delights in this kind of mess of a world that we so often experience. Like Sid in Toy Story, some kind of sadistic pleasure. No. He's the Lord. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. But, and, and actually those gods are actually the idols of verse 7, aren't they? Those kind of versions of God, they're not the true and living God. They're the idols and serving those kind of, that kind of a God, if that's the kind of image we have of God in our mind, that is only going to lead us to fear. It's only going to lead us to hopelessness or to depression. But the Lord, how is we, the Lord described in verse 2? He is described as the God of darkness and thick clouds. The God of towering thunderclouds, isn't he? Clouds and darkness surround him. Verse 3, fire goes out from before him, consuming his foes. Verse 4, his lightning lights up the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains, verse 5, melt like wax before him. You know, we're so impressed by uh, mountain climbers, aren't we? This guy here um, is uh, uh, Nirmal uh, Purja, and uh, he climbed um, the world's highest, um, 14 highest mountains uh, in little more than six months in 2019. In six months, he climbed 14 highest mountains in the world. If you and I could climb Everest alone, that would be amazing, wouldn't it? And we were impressed. And last, uh, um, uh, last year, he was part of a team that summited K2 in the winter. It had never been done before. And we think, wow. <laughs> but the Lord of all the earth, well, to him, the mountains are like, you ever have that bit of mashed potato on your plate that you just wash off you know, when you're finished in the evening? That's what the mountains are to the Lord that bit of mashed potato, and put a bit of hot water and fairy liquid on it, and it's gone. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord. The heavens proclaim his righteousness, and all people see his glory. Didn't you see the news this week that several billionaires have jetted off to space and experienced weightlessness uh, for a short period? And in its own way, that's kind of impressive, isn't it? But the point of space, of the heavens in all their fullness, is to shout out how great God is, isn't it? We're not to be impressed by the billionaires, we're to be impressed by God, who's made all this. Before God, we are tiny and, and overwhelmed, even consumed. So yes, God is the God of butterflies and kittens and, 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 and sunsets, but he's also the God of sandstorms. He's the God of the calm night sky. And the raging storm. He's the God of gentle, cooling breezes. And of destroying tornadoes. And so we're to rejoice with God-smacked gladness. That God is this God. Well, god maybe we get. Because God is clearly awesome. But gladness, why would we rejoice in him in this way? Well, look at verse 2. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. So his throne is surrounded by this awesome, fiery, cloudy, it's, it's the language of Sinai, isn't it? Of Mount Sinai. But his foundation of his throne is justice and righteousness. From inside out, always, God is like that, just and right. He can't do any wrong. Ne never. God will never do wrong. Ever. God is not a God who's into virtue signalling. He is virtue itself. He's the very definition, the very embodiment of all that's right and good. And he's coming. 
with ultimate power to bring justice, to bring ultimate final justice, to consume his foes on every side, verse 3. So this psalm reminds us that there will be justice in this world, for this world, for all this world, for everyone in this world, where people have been demeaned or defrauded or destroyed because someone else had power or thought they were better than them, where men have battered women into submission, where property, lives, reputations have been stolen, where power has been seized and abused, where there's been fraud, greed, arrogant abuse in matters of trade or commerce, wherever it is that we see an injustice, there will be justice. Are there things that make you angry or scared? Things that you think are not fair? Or where the victims kind of, as it were, almost cry out to you because you're conscious of this situation, of this thing? The Lord is coming. The Lord is coming and righteousness and justice are his throne's foundations. He's coming like a storm, like an army coming over the hill to deal with all of that. Rejoice with God's smacked uh, with gob, gobsmacked, sorry, uh, gladness. But that isn't all of it, isn't it? Is it to to be um, glad in God in a gobsmacked way? Because it's the Lord who's like this, the promise making, promise keeping, rescuing God, who showed Himself to Israel through the Exodus as He rescued them out of captivity to Pharaoh, and who's fully revealed Himself to us through Jesus. And who's for us if we're a believer this morning in the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 10, verse 11. Uh, Let's look at those. I can't remember if I put a slide. No, I didn't put a slide. Uh, Let's read those. Let those who love the Lord hate evil, for he guards the lives of his faithful ones and delivers them from the hand of the wicked. Light shines on the righteous and joy on the upright in heart. You see, the God of darkness and clouds brings light for the righteous. How can we be righteous? That is a gift of God, isn't it? A gift to be in the right with him. A gift to be able to stand before him. Without that gift, that fiery, cloudy pillar would be an awful, awful sight with no comfort at all. But we who are evil at heart and enemies of God can be, as we sung earlier, ransomed, healed, restored, forgiven. Jesus on the cross endured that darkness for us. And so the gift is a gift of joy, a, the gift of him, of God with us through our trials, the gift of a future with him forever. So we're to rejoice with God's gob, gobsmacked, sorry, put my teeth in, gobsmacked joy um, and gladness. And just as this gladness has a weightiness, I hope we feel some sense of that weightiness of the joy uh, from this psalm. And depth, it also has direction. Because, verse 10, to love God is to hate evil. Rejoice with hate-filled gladness. See, this psalm's quite surprising, isn't it? We've had gritty gladness, we've had gobsmacked gladness, and now we've got hate-filled gladness. This isn't happy, clappy, happy, clappy, is it? But it's something that's deep and really wonderful. Greed, envy, pride, murder, hatred, malice, bitterness... Tribalism in all its ugly forms, theft, lust, perversion, gossip, dishonouring God, being thanklessly indifferent to him, being prayerlessly independent uh, from him, using him to get what we want. All those ways that we don't worship God as we should, or try and worship him in the ways that we want to, they're all awful things. Sin and evil demean and destroy us as people. Evil and sin have never done anyone any good in life. They've never helped anyone, really. To love God is to hate evil. And this isn't the bit of the sermon where you get, we get to look at other people, <laughs> uh, either out there, or next to us, or no. To hate evil means to hate it Everywhere. So yes, there will be applications elsewhere. But I think the first thing is that we would hate evil where we see it in ourselves 
first of all, because that's what happened to Isaiah, if you look at Isaiah chapter 6, so when you get home, when Isaiah had a glimpse of how holy and amazing and awesome God is in his splendor, like we've seen in this psalm, he was undone. He fell down, aware of his own uncleanness before God. The same with Peter, when um, Jesus had done a miracle of, of um, helping them to catch fish. The first thing Peter did was to fall down and to say, go away from me, Lord, I'm unclean. That was Peter's response. We're to hate evil. Only God can tune us to his own heart and ways, to, to give us knowledge of, of what's holy and a conviction of his goodness and his ways right inside us. Only God can reshape what we love and what we hate so that that would line up with what he loves and what he hates. Only God can show us our sin and help us to repent of it and to receive the mercy that comes to us through Christ and that never fails for us in Christ. I guess we've all seen uh, that kind of badge. Uh, watching videos on the, on the BBC um, iPlayer it always comes up with that badge um, at the moment and we know why and there's good reasons why. It's a, an aspiration, isn't it, that hate won't win. And the great news from the Bible is that yes, Sinful hate won't win. Tribalism, nationalism, racism, all of that won't win. But not because of us, not because of some campaign on social media, because of God, because of God's righteous hatred of all that's wrong. He hates evil and he will destroy it. So actually that's wrong, isn't it, as well? Because hate will win. God's hatred of sin will win. And that is a great, great hope. So in a sense, to be a Christian is to be a hater. It's to be filled with hate speech in the right sense of hating the right things, the things that God hates. And we're not to be moralistic crusaders, that kind of crusading angrily against other people. The battle is the Lord's. He's the one. Why would you try and be the mini tornado in front of the great tornado of justice? God is coming in his judgment. No, it's a sense of, of having that sense of the thundering clouds coming to address all wickedness. Having a deep understanding of who God is. And realising that those deep clouds enveloped Jesus at the cross. When he cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He was experiencing that for others, for us. And for all those who will come and turn to him, whatever they've been living, or whatever lives they've been living, whatever they've been doing, we're to rejoice with hate-filled gladness. We're to hate sin, hate it in ourselves, hate it wherever we see evil in the world, and to be glad because God's dealing with all of that. And lastly, we're to rejoice with a global gladness because this rejoicing is for everyone everywhere. Uh, let's look at the end first, verse 12. We're called to this one by one, aren't we? Rejoice in the Lord, you who are righteous. We're called to come and to be righteous, to belong to God by turning from our sins and trusting Jesus. It's as simple and as difficult as that, isn't it? And then verse 8, we're called to come and be part of a rejoicing community. But verse 8 sort of zooms out on God's chosen and gathered people, which in the Old Testament was geographically centred on Mount Zion in Jerusalem. But now it's centred on Jesus and expressed in Jesus' church. Men and women, boys and girls from every nation, tribe, culture and language who will hear and rejoice. And so many have. And there are still so many more to be told. And this is a call, verse 1, that goes out to the whole creation and to all who live in every part of the world. The Lord reigns. Let the earth be glad. He's in charge. He rules over the whole world at all times and in all places. His righteous hatred of evil will win. So that which you feel oppressed by, it will be ended. It will be brought to account. Every instance of that, every aspect of that, there's no place where evil can somehow hide away and resist God. The Lord reigns. 
Let the earth be glad. And his righteous committed love uh, uh, of those who are his will win the day. He's rescuing all who call on him, all who turn from their wickedness, all who believe in his son. And he's rescuing us from evil too within ourselves. Not just that we're forgiven, but that bit by bit we're changed. So that we're less and less evil and more and more the way God wants us to be. So rejoice, be glad, and hate evil. We're going to sing in response to that a song that doesn't quite pick up every part of this song, but it helps us to re-echo it back uh, to God in in song and to make it our rejoicing. It's the the Lord is King, and uh, it will be uh, familiar to those of us who are older. If we're younger, it might be a reasonably new song, although it is an old song, but it's got an easy tune and we'll pick it up. Uh, very soon as we sing together. The Lord is King and then we'll pray. you because you are the king the king of kings the lord of lords and lord we are glad because you are the one who has called us to follow you to know you to trust in you and we thank you lord that the gladness that we can know uh, because of you the rejoicing that we can know because of you is not based on some dream or some fantasy but it's all about the fact lord that you are almighty god and you've called us to be your children and to know you and lord we're amazed at your love for us and we're amazed at how wonderful you are you are the holy god and yet we can say lord our god Help us, Lord, to hate evil and injustice and help us to love the things that you love and help us in our lives, Lord, to share the good news of the King of Kings, the one who is King of Kings, who came to be our Saviour and to bring us back to him. And we thank you, Lord, that this is a message not just for Tipton, not just for the black country or for England, but for 
everyone in the whole world. We thank you that this message of love and redemption crosses all cultures and is open to every man and woman and boy and girl. So help us here, Lord, in this small corner, as it were, here in the black country, to be a light that shines the good news of the gospel out to others, that they too might come to know you as their Lord and Saviour and King of Kings. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. And for our closing hymn, we're going to sing Behold Our God. Let's uh, stand and sing that together. Let's pray as we close. Father God, we thank you for this wonderful message that we've heard today. Lord, we thank you that we can rejoice 
and be glad because of you and because of who you are. And Lord, we pray that as we go into this coming week, Lord, that you would help us, Lord, to be mindful of who it is that we serve, who it is that has called us. And help us to go, Lord, in the gladness that comes from that and to rejoice in you. Uh, Lord, even in the difficult uh, things that we may have to do, even in sadness, help us to know that we are in you and you are in us. Lord, help us to be a blessing to others this week because of your love in our lives. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.